What if Deku had the same powers as the Meta? So we're doing another What If today. Last time we did What If the Doom Slayer was in the Fallout universe. This time we'll be doing What If Deku from My Hero Academia didn't get All Might's quirk, but instead developed the powers of the Red vs Blue villain, the Meta. And if you don't know who he is, I'll give you a quick rundown on his backstory. The Meta was a soldier for a secret government organisation called Project Freelancer. He was given an AI named Sigma, who eventually drew drove him insane and caused him to go searching for other AIs and equipment to make himself more powerful. Things like super strength, energy shields, invisibility, stuff like that. So in this version of the story, Deku is still born quirkless, he still gets bullied by Bakugo and everyone else around him. So he isn't born with these powers, he eventually gets them, but from him being a kid to say the first episode of the series, Everything goes the same. He gets attacked by the sludge villain, saved by All Might. But All Might tells him that maybe with hard work he can be a hero in certain ways. And then he goes, and then Deku goes on to, to try and help back and go against the sludge villain, like in the series. But instead, when All Might comes in, he actually gets angry at Deku and tells him he won't be a hero. This breaks him. He goes home and collapses, passes out, and in his own head, he starts to hear voices. The first voice introduces himself as Sigma, and then from there he introduces Omega the Rage, Delta the Logic, Theta the Trust, and Gamma the Deceit. Also Ada and Iota, the happiness and the fear, but they don't talk so they're not really important. Deku wonders who they are, and well... They explain that they're his quirk. And you're probably wondering, Deku doesn't have a quirk. But, he was given All Might's quirk, which means he has the capacity to have one. And this sort of being shut down by All Might has given his body the push it needed to develop a quirk. Sort of similar to how in Spider-Man 2, when Peter's feeling really down and low, he loses his powers, but when he gets that feeling back inside him, he gets his powers back. So, with being shut down by All Might, he breaks and develops this power. And essentially, his mind has split into all these AIs that each represent a different part of him. In the time before the UA entrance exam, Deku would get to know his new AIs pretty well. He, he and Delta would bond over their shared love of, well, documenting things. Theta, I think, would look to Izuku more for trust, which is kind of understandable, that's basically what he is. Sigma would also like the fact that Deku takes note on all the heroes. Deku probably wouldn't get along that well with Omega and Gamma. But, basically, the way this works is the more he feels something, the stronger he's become. Like, the more deceitful he's feeling, the more Gamma gets more control over him. And if he feels so angry that he wants to basically punch someone in the face, then Omega could take over. Sort of in a similar way to Tokoyami's quirk. So if Deku's feeling a certain way, one of the AIs could take over his body. Time jump. So now we move on to the UA entrance exams, and Bedoria would do pretty well being able to crush robots pretty easily with his immense strength, think faster due to Sigma and the others. He would still get rescue points for saving more Chaco. Stuff like that, so yeah, he passed that pretty easily. So now we skip to the first day of UA and the quirk tests. Specifically the part where Deku uses the, his powers to throw the softball. It doesn't go as far, but he still gets rushed by Bakugo. And instinctively he throws up a domed energy shield. Later that day, Bakugo would go on to confront Deku about how he got those powers. And that's when he would meet the AIs. Mainly Omega, who would get all up in his face. So now we skip forward to the fight training. All of the matchups happen the same, with Deku and Oraka being against Bakugo and Ida. So basically everything goes the same up until the confrontation between Bakugo and Deku inside the building. Bakugo starts spouting off some crap about how he's better than Deku, and thus Deku gets more and more frustrated. Until eventually, Omega takes over.